The market pops up to our target and sells off strongly. Have the bears finally come out of hibernation? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, we talked about the fact that we were looking for the market to bounce up toward that 4604 area and then look for a sell-off that breaks support, and that's exactly what we saw. The market bounced up to 4607 and then sold strongly through the second half of the day. Now the question is, are the bears here to stay? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the sell-off yesterday, we do have some things that have changed, so let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour SPX chart, and I'm on the SPX. I was on it yesterday as well because the ES is a little bit sloppy, and I wanted a nice clean chart so we could see the fibs and targets and everything, make sure we understand exactly what we're looking at. Yesterday, we talked about the fact we'd be looking for this to bounce up toward that 4604 area and sell from there. They got the 4607, so we were way off, and then started to sell the rest of the day breaking some support for the first time uh, on ES. Now, they haven't broken a big level of support, but they did break upper support here, 4547 area, and they came right down to our next area of support at that 4528 zone we've been talking about. If they can push down through that, okay, then the next level of support is 4500, and then 4567, below 40, or 4467. Below 4467, we get into this gap, uh, which they will likely fill anyway, but the overall structure will take care of all of that. So what kind of structure do we have? It's too early to say. But overall, if they can get below this 4467 area, that would tell us a uh, top is likely in, whether that's a top in a wave three and we're looking for four, or it's a top in a wave C and we're looking for, of B and we're looking for a C wave down is to be determined. So far what we have is we have a one down, a two up, and a three down. We don't have anything other than that, but on this three down, we don't have any kind of four and five, so I would look for a minimum of a four or five. It comes down a little bit lower, and that would ultimately break that support that they came down into here at 45.27. They break down below that, then we can look for a bounce, and we possibly have a wave A or a wave one down. Again, we'll need more time and more structure to exactly know where we're at on this pullback. But we would look for that kind of move down. And this bounce doesn't have to be huge. And when you see on NQ what we're looking at, um, this bounce can lead to another big selling movement based on what's going on on the NQ. But as of now, this is what we're looking at. Uh, as a potential, we want that wave four up. That wave four would normally target about the 45, 56 to 64 area, uh, preferably holding under 56, and then down from there. So this is assuming that the close was the bottom. If the close is not the bottom, obviously they can continue to extend this move down. And then eventually we'll look for that wave four bounce and five to complete that move and then look for a bigger bounce from there. But ultimately, this is what we would look for as the primary count. As a secondary count, it is possible that they can hold here as a bigger wave four. And you would have off of the low a one, two, three, four. five up toward the 4642 area. This should target about 4500, which is why it's critical to break that area. That is the 382 retrace and a common wave four target. However, given the NASDAQ's posture, given the what happened in the RTY today, given uh, this straight down selling that you see at the end of diagonals, I don't think that's going to be the case, but it's something to keep an eye on, and 4500 is going to be a big number for the SPX to push through. So those are the two paths we're looking at. The primary being down, where we have three waves down, we'd look for a four or five. And the secondary being holding this 4,500 level and coming back up to the 4,642 SPX level. So those are the two potential paths we would look for over the next few days on the SPX. Over on the NASDAQ, Okay, on the NASDAQ, guys, I told you to be aware of a wave C bounce into that 15.8 to 15.920 region. They hit 15.900 on the, just about on the dot, just a little higher than that. They hit the 15.900 area and then sold off strongly from there. That's exactly what we talked about yesterday should happen, and that's exactly what did happen. You get your wave one down. Now you've got an ABC up for two. Now you've got a wave one down of three. And as I talked about on the ES, where I said that wave four bounce could be short, You'd look for a bounce here in wave two of three, 
And that bounce can come as high as 15,676 to 15,762. But a lot of times, again, in these diagonal structures, you don't get huge bounces and you get rapid selling to the downside. So we could see a small bounce here on the NASDAQ and then down in wave three. That would target 15,185 first. Then back up toward the um, pivot here at 15,458. Then back down to the 14,965 area and then up and down again. So that is the uh, path we would track on the NASDAQ for the overall move down. We would count this as one of three, look for a two of three bounce, and then three of three down to the 15,185 area and uh, into this wave one area, which would be a really strong sign that the top is in on the NASDAQ. And then we look for the completion of the overall pattern to the downside. So the NASDAQ is playing very well here. We do have a really strong setup for a down move. That would be our expectation that any kind of bounce would be a wave two of three. And that's valid as long as we're under this wave, bigger wave two high at 15,900. So a bounce in the NASDAQ, then down. And if they break this 15,458 level, we'll look for 15,322. And once they hit that level, as long as they stay below 15,543, the market is bearish uh, down to the 14. 744 level. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It will take you right over to the webpage. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans. They both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there. I want you to make sure you love it and become part of my trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. We also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners course. If you ever wanted to learn Elliott Wave or were confused by it or didn't understand how it worked. This is an amazing course, 25 videos, where I go through mindset. I go through setup. I go through why Elliott Wave works, the chart setup, every tool you need to know, the tops and bottoms, the targets that we hit, as well as how every wave works, its failure points, its success points, and how to use them to your advantage. You can finally understand the market instead of trying to decipher news cycles. The cool thing about this course is it is included in both rooms. So in my first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the training material you just saw. We swing trade, so we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does, and we trade the SPY and the QQQ. However, if you are looking for day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room as well as individual stocks, day trading, and PT's reduced risk binary method that absolutely crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you huge multiples on your money, and it's how he structures the trade that's so unique. It's something you really have to see to understand, and that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, Averaging 3 to 4% gains per week, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. Key takeaways for today. We're looking for continuation here and a 4.5, so a little bounce. And then down, they can extend directly, but eventually we would look for a 4.5. Key levels are 4,500 and 44.67 to the downside, as well as breaking this 44.27 area. For the bulls, if they can hold 4,500, they do have a chance to push it back to 4,642. But with the straight down selling the, and the posture of the NASDAQ, I do view that as less likely. Over on the NASDAQ, as we talked about, we got that move up to 15,900 and then selling down in wave one of three. We'd now look for a bounce in two of three to the 15,676 to 762 region, then down below the pivot at 15,458. If they can stay below that and hit the 1.0, then as long as we're below the 15, uh, 543 area. It is bearish down to 14,744. Guys, it's the weekend. It's actually my birthday weekend, and I'm going to go celebrate and have a wonderful time. I hope you do as well. Get away from the computer, have a drink, enjoy your family. I will talk to you next week.